Absorb the resources that exist in the world, and usually the richest people in the world are one or two percent. Now, perhaps that inequality gap is larger now than it's ever been before, but it's always existed. It existed in the society of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the lights go out, it's you, babe. Every time I'm down, it's you, babe. Every night... Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our channel. It's your boy, Jesse Keegan. And we are finding Jesse. So right about now, we're going to do another reaction video. But before we get into the reaction, guys, I want to thank everyone out there who's been subscribing to the channel. You guys are really, really amazing. Thank you so much. You are super amazing. And also, I want to thank the people who've been, sub so, you know, giving a suggestion to the videos that we normally react to. You guys are also amazing. And also, if you're new to this channel, we're finding Jesse. We do any kind of reaction video. Just let us know in the comment section below. And we're going to do it for you. <clears throat> any kind of reaction video, man. We do um, music type of reaction videos we do religious type of reaction videos any funny kind of reaction we just let us know in the comment section below yeah, many people have been asking me is this channel for only muslim whatever channel and whatnot and i say not necessarily a muslim channel it's just a channel that uh any suggestion is welcomed for uh for reaction so if we get more of muslim type of reaction videos we do it if we get more of music type of so it's up to you guys you know if you want us to do more of the musical type of thing put down on the comment section below and we're gonna do it for you and <clears throat> Also, don't forget to go and subscribe to our new channel. We have our new channel that is called uh, Funny and Jesse 2.0. Uh, the channel is more of our vlogs and uh, what we normally do in our daily lives and whatnot. Just make sure to go and subscribe on that channel and I'll be personally really happy because you guys have been supporting us since when we had zero subscribers up to now that we have uh, close to 13,000 subscribers. Yeah, so support us the same way on the other channel and I'll be so glad and I'll be happy. And yeah, so right about now, we're going to do another reaction video. And this one right here was suggested by, again, a lot of people. They suggested that we should go react to Ya Allah, get me out of this powerful reminder. So without any further ado, guys, let's get it. When you're sick and you really, really, really want water, you really, really want that cold water. But that cold water will increase you in sickness and the doctor holds it back from you. Knowing that it's, go it's not good for your condition right now. But when you're in that pain, can you see outside of that pain? No, that pain is influencing your thought process, your spirituality, your perspective on life, your perspective on death. You're seeing everything through that lens of pain. And suddenly all you want is, Ya Allah, get me out of this. Ya Allah, get me out of this pain. And Allah holds it back from you because He knows it's better for you. Because why would Allah give a drug to an addict and your addiction is dunya? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed your addiction? And many times we think to ourselves, we see a person who's in ease and we see a person who's in hardship. And essentially, and this is one of the very powerful uh, uh, lines of Ibn Ata'illah Iskandari rahimahullah ta'ala. He said that throughout this, the world's history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overwhelms one group of people with ease and He overwhelms one group of people with hardship and you rarely find people in between. What does that mean? You know, if you study history, Economic inequality is nothing new. It existed. It's existed throughout our world history. Usually the rich are filthy rich and the poor are really poor. That's the way the world has worked. The elite usurp the resources that exist in the world and usually the richest people in the world are one or two percent. Now perhaps that inequality gap is larger now than it's ever been before, but it's always existed. It existed in the society of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It existed in this society before now. It's existed throughout most of the world and throughout history. That the poor are very poor and that the rich are very, very rich. And there are two paths to Allah. There is the path of ease, which is to be responded to with gratitude in this world. And there's the path of hardship to which the response is patience. Both of these arrive at Jannah. The majority of people will figure it out in hardship and not in ease. And that's why the majority of Ahlul Jannah, the majority of the people of paradise, are poor people, are fuqara and masakeen. They make up the majority because it's easier to be distracted by wealth than it is to be distracted by hardship. It's far easier. Now, if these are the two paths to Allah, 
If I was to present a choice to each and every single one of you and say you can either be put in ease and be grateful or you can be put in hardship and be patient, there isn't a single person in here, I think, that would say, I'll take the hardship and patience. Each and every single one of us would say, okay, great. Let Allah give us and we'll be in ease and we'll say Alhamdulillah and we'll be all good, right? That's how each and every single one of us would naturally respond. And we will protest our case to Allah. Ya Allah, get me out of this hardship and I will be grateful. But Allah knows what will happen to you. Allah knows what will happen to your personality. Allah knows that if this dunya is given to you, it will distance you. And Allah holds it back. And never equate your situation with your status. Surah Al-Kahf. Allah punished a man by giving him an extra garden. Allah loved a couple, so he took away their child. Think about that. If you're that couple and if you're that man whose gardens are increasing, and that couple who just lost a child, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that couple, and this person is only further entrenching himself in disobedience and in disregard and ruining himself in the hereafter. But I want to throw something at you guys, inshallah ta'ala, with my last few minutes. And that is number one. Do not ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever putting you in an unfavorable situation to draw close to Him. What Allah has given you, your share of dunya, your share of hardship, your share of ease, Allah has given you the right slate so that you can respond in the right way. Don't ever think that Allah is putting you in an unfavorable situation. That's number one. Number two, the most noble man in terms of his lineage, in terms of his pure nobility in the worldly sense and also in the hereafter sense, is who the Prophet ﷺ said is Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah mentions about the Prophet ﷺ said about Yusuf alayhi salam that he is Nabiullah, the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah. There is no man more noble than that. But Subhanallah, the ulama say, look, sharawhu bi thamanin bakhsin darahim ma'duda. Yusuf alayhi salam is pulled out of a well, a slave. The one who's selling him doesn't value him, nor do the one who's purchasing him value him. Subhanallah, he's the product of a transaction. He's, the, he's a noble man in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most noble lineage, a prophet of Allah. And the one who's selling him just wants to get rid of him, so he only values him at a few coins. And the one who's purchasing him doesn't see any value in, in, in him either, so he gives him a few coins. Yusuf is completely considered devalued in the worldly sense while still maintaining great nobility in the sight of Allah because this world and everything that is an indicator in this world is worthless to Allah. It is of absolutely no value to Allah. But here's the little twist I'm going to throw at you guys. Why in the world, why in the world, any of us living in this context that we're in right here would allow ourselves the idea or the uh, luxury of dwelling in this idea that we are in the bottom 1% of the world. This group of people that's sitting right here is of the top 1% in terms of privilege in the world. Yet how many of us in our entitlement look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are saying, why me? Privileged in regards to our safety and security, privileged in regards to our wealth, because you know, just think about where we are right now and what situation we're in. Why do we always assume underdog status when we're talking about hardship and ease? Why? Wow, that's a powerful message right there. That's a really powerful message. I mean, um, have you ever sat down and asked God, like, why me? Like something happens to you and you feel like you should question God or maybe you should just ask yourself questions and you feel like you deserve answers and whatnot. <clears throat> and most of the people don't like hardship, most of the people don't have patience. You get it. I mean, especially at this day and age that we live in today when things are moving really fast, people don't want to go through hardship. They feel like when you... Uh, people feel like when you go through hardship, that's a punishment, you get it? But I don't want to call it a punishment, I, I, I just want to call it, it's just a passing phase of, of adversity and one way or the other it's gonna subside, you get it? 
uh, that's the beginning of success and that's the beginning of better things that are coming that will come to you like I'm not saying that to say that ah so we should go through hardship so that they can become successful no not necessarily I mean everybody has their own fair share of hardship there are people who don't go through hardship and at the end of the day they become successful there are people who don't even work hard they just have that luck and they become successful but everybody on this earth we live in has a purpose and the purpose is determined by the one who created us you get it so um you might think that you're going through hardship but think about it that person who has never eaten since morning and has never even had a drink since morning and he's still happy and surviving you get it there are people who live in the very deepest part of the world and they're happy people you get it and then think of this rich guy who has it all but again he feels so isolated he feels like he feels so sad their family is crumbling down or maybe he's sick of some disease that uh, needs a lot of treatment here and there you get it someone said that I'd rather have $20 and live my healthy life and be happy rather than having 100 million dollars and living a, a bad health and uh, uh, having so much problems in my life you get it so this actually shows you that mm, money is um is a tool that actually uh generates happiness but it doesn't mean that it gives you a guarantee that you'll have 100 percent happiness you get it what brings you happiness is the people who are around you if you are around if you're around good people if you marry a, a good wife if you marry a good husband uh if you have children who are you know respectful then you'll live a better life and a happy life no matter how much you earn your life is going to be amazing but anyway uh this powerful uh, reminder over here is just to let us know that um uh that it, it's it's not um like you might go through hardship but it doesn't mean that you should take it the way it is sometimes you go through hardship and you take it like a chump and then you uh you know come up and uh, conquer your hardshipness or probably your fears and all these kind of things and then you become victorious you get it so one way or the other everybody has to go through all this but you need to know how to handle it like a chump you know how to handle it in a better way so that it doesn't um, overweight you or something like that and I, I, I believe that the message over here is is it goes even much deeper and it's really really amazing that at this particular moment we we are here learning about uh, things like this when we at our comfort zone of our houses or, so, or something like that I mean this is really amazing and um, you, 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 the best thing to do when you're out of when when you're in this kind of state you should just I mean put yourself into prayers or put yourself subject yourself into prayers and and uh, ask go to uh, probably uh, issue you out from that particular trouble or whatnot and if you're the meditative kind of guy make sure you have that positive mindset make sure your energy is just out there vibrating at a higher level so that you can be out of these kind of situations you know and um, not every when such a thing happens to you doesn't mean that you're doomed that is doesn't mean that you're finished no there are better things out there after all this um uh, what do you call this adversity that's, that that is happening in your life and yeah if you're going through anything if you're going through tough times there's always a light towards the end of the tunnel i don't like saying that but there's always better days there's always better days always always better days and uh, 
as uh, as as we go up with a positive mindset trust me you will conquer even more better things out there anyway if you feel like i react to this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down my comment section or comment section tell us exactly what you feel about our reaction what do you feel about this video over here just let me know in the comment section below what is it that uh you've learned about the video just go in the comment section below and just go in the comment section below and let's just chop it up and yeah and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more you keep on subscribing the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better content and last but not the least i'm going to see you rather we're going to see you in the next video and peace out